not worth the cost. That's the line from the federal conservatives about the newly released budget. Here this morning to share his thoughts on the budget and more is leader of the official opposition and leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, Pierre Polyev. It is your first time with us here in your morning, so welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm glad to have you here this morning, in fact, because Canadians who may not be satisfied with this budget are going to be looking for an alternative. And, and I know you don't like this budget and you're not going to vote for it, uh, but I wanted to start on affordable and available housing for millennials. The Bank of Canada says last year, investors accounted for 30% of the home buying market. So the Trudeau Freeland budget wants to tackle that by taxing wealthier Canadians and developers who are buying up those options, keeping them out of the hands of millennials. Would you keep tax the rich in order that millennials could then access the housing that's available right now? Just a quick correction. There is no tax the rich in this budget. Uh, that's just slogans and distractions. What the budget will ultimately do is make uh, working class and the working poor pay even more. After eight, sorry, after nine years of Trudeau promising that he would so-called tax the rich, uh, the rich are doing better than ever by his own admission. And there is no more middle class. So the middle class has turned into the working poor. He's doubled your rent. He's doubled your mortgage payment. He's doubled the needed down payment for an average home. And he's given Canada the worst housing inflation in the G7. So this is a really like a made in Canada problem made by Justin Trudeau. The common sense solution I have to build the homes is to require uh, municipalities uh, to permit 15% more home building by freeing up land, speeding up permits, and including high density sky rises around every transit station. I will also sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. And I'll get rid of the carbon tax to lower the, the cost of transporting building materials all of these things will build the homes and will have affordable housing like we did when I was housing minister nine years ago when the average rent, if you can believe it, was actually only $970, $970. And the average mortgage payment was about $1,400 for the average brand new home. Yeah. So that's the common sense result that I delivered as minister of housing nine years ago and that we'll bring home when I'm prime minister. Uh, that's about new housing, but what I was asking about is available housing right now. Millennials are saying, I can see it, it's there. There are Canadians, and that, that gap is getting bigger. There are a sector of mm -hmm. Canadians who can afford to buy more than one house and then rent it out to people. And millennials are saying, those are the people, that 30% is accessing the housing that I need. So if you're not going to put a tax on, tax on wealthier Canadians, then what would you do so that they can access available housing? So there is no available housing. That's the problem. We have the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have by far the most land, the most lumber, and spend the largest share of our economy on home building. Uh, there is a shortage of rental housing. So you can, we, can, we can crack down on those people who buy or build rental housing if, if you want, but there's already a shortage in that area. And that's one of the reasons why the rent has doubled under eight years of Justin Trudeau. Uh, and then there's also a shortage of housing to buy. So what we need is more homes. Uh, and the only way to do that is to get the bureaucracy out of the way. We have the second slowest building permits of any country in the OECD. In Toronto, uh, government uh, delays, permitting charges, fees, adds $350,000 to the cost of every newly built home. In Vancouver, it's $1.2 million per home. Yeah. The only way to fix that is to get the local governments to speed up, lower the cost, and free up land to build, build, build. And that's why I'm going to tie the federal infrastructure dollars that I give municipalities to the number of homes they allow to be built. We pay realtors for the number of homes they sell, builders for the number they build, I want to pay municipalities their federal sums based on the number of homes they permit yeah. to be built. That's how we're going to bring homes that young people can afford, like they could afford uh, nine years ago when I was housing minister. Uh, listen, I remember those days too. I want to pull back a little bit wider. You have called this budget an orgy of overspending. It's a reminder of what's in there right now. There's $8.5 billion for housing, $8.1 billion for defense, $6.1 for the Canada Disability Benefit. There's also a billion to expand for childcare plus healthcare. So if that is overspending, if that's too much, how then 
would you spend Canadians' money to fix these problems? Where would Pierre Polyev put Canadian dollars? And if that's too much, then what is the right amount? First point I would make is just because something's more expensive doesn't mean it's better. So we all agree that, uh, for example, food is a good thing. But if I came back home from the grocery store and had spent a thousand dollars and I had only a few bags of groceries and I said, my wife would not pat me on the back because our budget was really expensive. She'd, uh, I'd be sleeping in the doghouse. She would be telling me, what did you get for the money? Well, you'd get points yeah, for going grocery grew. shopping. So that would be. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I might get some, but, but not if I blew the bank. And uh, the same goes for government. Yeah, Trudeau's spending not just $8 billion, he spent $89 billion on housing. But what's the result? He's doubled housing costs. Just because we build expensive bureaucracies in Ottawa doesn't mean you get better results. It means you get more expensive government. So um, what I would do is build homes and not bureaucracy. Uh, and in, I'm going to bring in a common sense dollar for dollar law that will run the government's finances the way single moms and small businesses run their finances. That is to say, we have to find one dollar of savings right. for every new dollar of spending. That will require ministers and top bureaucrats find and weed out the waste so that we get more value for our money. A more affordable government will mean lower taxes, interest rates and inflation for Canadians. Okay, you brought up food, so I, I want to bring this up as well. Annual Canada Food Price Report projects the average family is going to spend about $16,000 on groceries a year. Meantime, we know grocery chains are posting record profits. So if elected, how would your government hold corporations in check? How would you bring down the price of food for people? That's what people want to know. Groceries are expensive. You're right. Um, after nine years of Trudeau, grocery prices have exploded. One of the causes is, of course, the carbon tax. The carbon tax on the farmers who produce the food and the truckers who ship the food is a tax on all who buy the food. Common sense conservatives uh, will axe the carbon tax to bring down the cost of food. We'll reduce the red tape costs for our farmers and we'll push for more competition in our grocery, uh, in the grocery sector. And that's how we're going to bring home affordable food because, you know, before Justin Trudeau, we didn't have 2 million people lined up at food banks. We didn't have 8,000 people uh, signing up to a Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network to, 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 to share tips on eating out of a garbage can. These are all things that have happened since Jagmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau teamed up in a costly coalition that taxes your food, takes your money, punishes your work and doubles your housing costs. I want to turn to leadership for just a moment in our last question. Uh, you know, viewers would have seen you recently talking about the late uh, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. Years ago on our program, uh, we sat down, we had a conversation about the importance of leadership, about diversity, inclusion and immigration. I'm going to play you what he had to say and then get your response out of it. So we should be welcoming uh, to all immigrants and make life easy for them when they get here so that they become the tremendous contributors that they, that they are. Anybody who forgets that is not going to be Prime Minister of Canada. This country will not accept someone as its leader who doesn't articulate that kind of a view. So I, my question to you then is, do you agree? Will you continue to be a champion for diversity and inclusion, not just with the Conservative Party, with Canada as a whole? Well, I, I, I'm not a big believer in um, labels. I'm a big believer in results. And what we see right now after nine years of Trudeau is that immigrant refugees are sleeping under bridges on street corners. 20, we just found out 26 uh, students from abroad were crammed into one basement in a Brampton home. 26 in one basement. Uh, this is the horror that Trudeau has brought to our immigration system. My common sense plan will get back Canada back to having the most successful immigration system in the world, as it did under Mulroney and under under Kretsch and Martin and Harper, uh, and uh, that will include, for example, bringing in a blue seal national professional standard that get the provinces to sign on to, so that an immigrant doctor or nurse can take a test, prove they're qualified, and get to work as a doctor or a nurse and serve our healthcare system. We have 20,000 immigrant doctors, 32,000 immigrant nurses, 
all banned from working in our hospital system because they can't get a license. This will do in the professions, what we've already done in the trades, have a national standard to get people licensed and get those wait times down in our medical system. Speaking of time, that is all the time that we have for today. Mr. Polyev, thanks for coming on this morning. Great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.